Moving on, the next case study that we need to look at is the spring mass system. Doing, doing, doing. Wow, you look at this. It looks like a wave, isn't it? You look at waves so much. Yes, it is related to waves. We're going to study why there are waves behaving like that. So here's the spring mass system. We're going to do the same steps like what we did in the pendulum. Step one, we need to find an unbalanced force somewhere. But before that, oh, wait all. Oh, I want to introduce you again to the idea of equilibrium position. So for our pendulum, equilibrium position was in the middle. But for our spring, where is our equilibrium position? Can we draw a line for that? Where will the spring chill at if we let it be there? Mm, let's draw a line right here. So your equilibrium or chill position for this spring will be from when the spring is right here. Ta. You see? Well, it's kind of like the wave graph, la, the middle of the graph. Okay, then you go up, positive displacement, negative displacement. So the middle is what we call the equilibrium position. Okay, so there are certain things to know about the equilibrium position. Why is it called equilibrium? Can you remember from AS? What, what does equilibrium mean? What is that? No something, something. No net force, no net torque. Yes, there are forces here. So if you're at the equilibrium position like this fella here, you have a weight or gravitational force acting on you downwards. right? But you also have what we call the Hooke's Law. What is that thing? What's the force called? Don't say Hooke's force. It's just a spring force. I mean, you can call it that. And this one is your f equals to kx. Or let's just call this f equals to kx naught. Just to tell us like, oh, it's there in the beginning equilibrium. So at this equilibrium position, that is when there is no net force and that is when your mg equals to kx. Equilibrium, ah, you're not going to have acceleration. So at this position is where acceleration is zero. Yay. But as we move along to different, different points, well, you realize that, hmm. It's not going to be not net force anymore. Because, for example, at this one up here, you have the same mg. It's not changing, okay? The mass is still the same. But then, where is this spring trying to push the bob? The spring is compressed. It doesn't like that. So, it's going to exert a downward force. I don't know what magnitude. I'm just going to draw an arrow. And this is also your kx. This kx is because of an extension or a compression of the spring. So where's the net force? Oh, so you have a net force and acceleration downward. Dun, 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 dun. So if your particle is here, it's going to accelerate downward already. Lor. You just got net force, man. Net force downward, acceleration downward. Then, okay, la, you keep going. I'll choose another point here for you to draw one more. Okay, here, you still have the mass, the weight of the object. And the spring is extended a lot. So it does not like that also. You want to go back to equilibrium position. So it's going to have a very big a restoring force. Kx. Okay. So, hmm. Did I say restoring force? So if you notice in all cases, this green arrow, spring by the force by the spring, is the restoring force. Restoring because he always tries to push the bob back to the middle line, which is our equilibrium line in the middle, or that one, the dotted one. Okay, so if we want to find what is the equation based on Newton's second law for this spring system, so that we can find a relationship between acceleration, sorry, acceleration and displacement. What's the relationship? Okay, we try Newton's second law. So we're going to do the same steps. Net force equals to mass times acceleration, right? So what are the net force acting on the object at? Let's let's take this point, this star point here. Use that as, a, as our example. Uh. Mm, how shall we write the net the the net force? Which one plus which one? Which one you want to be negative, which one positive? Actually it's really up to you. It doesn't matter. You decide lah. Okay. But I'm going to say since kx is bigger, let's use that as the positive one lah. So k times the extension. You know what? I'm going to tweak this a bit and say the original length plus some extension. Okay, x0 is original length of the spring, but extend some more already. So this whole thing is my green color x. Ah. Okay, this whole thing. But there's also mg. 
and they are in different directions, so I just make one negative. Uh. So there we go. I chose upwards as positive because my acceleration will be upwards eventually. So this thing is going to move up. Accelerate up, sorry. So that's why I choose this as positive. La. Okay, positive, la. negative, since up is positive. For convenience. Okay, so now how uh, how to semi-simplify a little bit? Oh, I see something. So previously, if you look at the left side, equilibrium is when mg equals to kx, right? So kx zero. Uh, so that means this first part becomes mg plus kx minus mg equals ma. And mg minus mg very convenient. Ah, yeah, kx equals to ma. Okay, we have found a relationship between a and x already. Now what's the next step? Don't forget, we have to adjust for the signs. So we also must mention, like in the previous part for pendulum, because a, the acceleration and the displacement is in opposite direction, so you need to add a negative sign somewhere. Where would you add it? Nah, you just add here, lor. kx equals to ma. Just put on either side, la. you want on the right side or the left side also can. I'm just going to put on the left side. Why is it opposite direction? Look, acceleration up, but your displacement away from the equilibrium position. Okay, so that's just what it means. Alright, so you're just telling you, when you displace, displace some direction, your acceleration is in another direction. Okay, <coughs> So we rearrange the final step to get acceleration equals to negative k over m times x. There we go. This is very much like our simple harmonic motion general equation. So you can say since k and m are constants or they are not changing. What's k? Ah? Spring constant, right? Depends on the material of the spring. m is the mass of the object. So they're all constant. So I can just say a is proportional to negative x. Done. And this is again our simple harmonic motion uh, pattern, uh, A proportional to X definition. Uh. Okay, but for our spring in particular, this is our equation for an oscillating spring. The further you are away from equilibrium, the bigger you will accelerate to the equilibrium. Hmm. Now, definition, uh, yeah, it's the same thing, so I'm just going to copy paste from here, this part. Actually, can I do that? Oh. I think I can do that in one note. Give me a moment. Okay, done. Now, <laughs> so in the same case, it's still simple harmonic motion, so we can still say that the acceleration of the particle on the spring, acceleration of particle is directly proportional to its displacement from the equilibrium position, which is saying further you are, more you accelerate to the middle. And don't forget, two marks, you must also say why we add the negative sign here. Okay, what's the significance? Acceleration and displacement are in the opposite direction. Okay, if your spring is trying to pull you up, your displacement actually is in downwards. If you're confused, what is displacement? Ah? Let me show you. Displacement actually is a vector that you can draw. For example, if I say, what is the displacement of this one here? I draw an arrow up and say, oh, this is my displacement okay and of course the string will spring will try to push the pendulum down so this is acceleration downwards because the net force is downwards so you see different direction now okay so that's your displacement there you have maximum displacement now either up here all the way here you can call that your amplitude like waves or down here which is still the amplitude but in the opposite sign of displacement okay so this is your displacement x. Don't worry too much about the signs as long as you know that x and a are in opposite directions. Okay, I mean if you want to call this positive x, negative x, sure, up to you. All right. Okay, so last bit. General equation. Do you know the general equation? It's the same one. So based on the proportionality definition. We can say the same thing. Oh, okay, la. A is negative omega square x. Same thing. Or you could say, particularly for this spring, we already derived the equation. No? This is not the general equation. Na. Kmx. This is for spring. Or this system of spring that we have defined. 
and x is the extension from the middle equilibrium position. Now, how do we find a some period for this spring oscillation? How long will it take for the spring to do one complete oscillation? Let's do the same steps we did just now. We compare these two equations, right? And we say, oh, w squared, or oh, I should say omega squared is the same as equal to k over m squared. Because you see the pattern? Negative something times x. Negative something times x. So you can say the angular uh, angular speed of frequency. By the way, what's the unit of this? Uh? Can you think about this? Omega square equals to k over m. Angular speed frequency, all this is what? 2 pi over t, right? Oh, let's also write that down. So 2 pi over t equals to k over m. Aha, we have t. Now we can get an equation for t already. So, quick side note. What is the unit for this thing? Uh? 2 pi over t. 2 pi is radian. So like radian per second. Uh, or angle theta per second. Uh, up to you. Just FYI, if you are ever wondering what's the unit. Okay, let's do our rearranging. This time I'll show up all the steps. So 2 pi equals to square root k over m. Rearrange so that we have our t on one side. So we can get the period of oscillation, which is t equals to, oh, you to balik the whole thing, you get 2 pi m over k. There is our equation. This will tell us how long it will take for one complete cycle of a uh, oscillating mass on the spring. There. Do you have to memorize this? Uh? I mean, you could, but it's better if you know how to derive it. Like, how do you create this pattern? Where do you get this from? Comparing your simple ionic motion equations. So yeah, that's your springs. Now let's also look at some animations about springs and take a careful close look on mass, spring constant, and how it affects the period of oscillation. So if you look at this simulation, right, you have the 100 gram. And I think I will put a poof, 250 gram. You might be wondering, miss, this line here is what? Uh? This line is the equilibrium position line. Uh? So if I drop it here, in fact, maybe I don't see the forces. I'll just see this force. Okay, so at this point, the net force is almost zero. I decrease the net force until it is zero. Okay. So in this particular situation, right, you notice that it's not going to oscillate. Lah. To oscillate, what should we do? We are going to displace it downwards. So to make our life easier, I'm just going to park a ruler here. Wow, this sim is so fun. Yeah, and people generally don't play with it, which I don't know why. So I'm going to displace it by, let's say, 80. So 60 to 80, that will be 20 cm. If you're wondering why I'm moving away, look at another screen. Lah. Okay. So I'm going to repeat the process again. This is the equilibrium position. I'm going to pull it down by... I'm going to pull it down by another 20. So it should be about here. Okay, are you happy now? Tell me you're happy. It's The displacement is around 20 cm. Nah almost 20 cm or exactly 20 cm okay not yeah this is a little rule all right so i look there avoid parallax error okay so now if i press play they will oscillate how do i know it will oscillate well you look at this black arrow this black arrow is the net force there net force okay and we have already agreed that for if there's an unbalanced force or a net force, the thing will accelerate. In fact, why don't we look at where the direction of the acceleration is? So the direction of acceleration will be the same as the direction of the net force. And you might be wondering, Miss Ha, why ho the arrow different length? But the acceleration almost same length. Why? Why? Well, my friends, um new splash. This thing is heavier. Okay, it's lighter. I think you think about it lah. Alright. 
So I'm just not going to show the acceleration first, so just going to let you play. And then you will notice that it is pretty obvious that the 250 gram is a lot more slower than the uh, 100 gram. Okay. Second thing you will notice is about the direction. If something is in simple harmonic motion, ho, the part, the object is the acceleration and the net force. Okay, I'll show acceleration. Acceleration will always be directed towards the equilibrium position. Okay, so you can see the yellow arrow is always directed towards the dotted line, which is the equilibrium position. All right, in fact, if I pause at any position, right, you will notice that it will always direct it towards here. And if you want to measure, uh, let's say, displacement, your displacement will be measured. Let's say you measure from here. Lah. But why would you want to measure here? Okay, so your displacement, so they are very, this one is a bit unconventional. They are measuring it from the original length means if I remove the 100 gram where the mass will be, okay? But this is not what I'm looking at. I am actually looking at the equilibrium position. The equilibrium position will be here, okay? So when you measure displacement, you will measure from this red line towards the mass, okay? So, and then for the equilibrium position for this 250 gram, it will be from this red line towards the mass. So you will notice that the direction of displacement and the direction of acceleration is opposite because of even if i don't draw this one now okay you see here the particle is above the equilibrium position but the acceleration is directed downwards okay so this is what i mean by uh, acting in opposite direction now okay so like that law you will notice that hey um hang on i should let them have the same spring constant so let's say this spring constant is the same amount. So this is not going to oscillate. Hang on. There we go. Okay. So with the same spring constant, my bad, just now, the spring constant was not the same. So even with the same spring constant, you will notice that the 100 gram will obviously accelerate with more, more higher frequency, lower period. And then the 250 gram is a, long, a slower period. So if you look at the... Uh, relationship that I've that we have derived here the larger the m the longer the t which you can tell from this diagram the larger the m the longer the t okay what about spring constants ah so if you look at the particular relationship right you can see from here I mean you can see from this relationship the smaller the k the larger the t okay so let's test this out Let's first change the mass so that the mass is constant. Alright, so I'm gonna... Do you know what this lab wants you to do with all this question mark, question mark? They actually want you to do a bunch of experiments to decide what is the mass of each of these different blocks. Maybe I shall let you do this as an assignment. I shall think about it. Anyway. For the purpose of this lecture, I'm gonna stick two mass with the same weight, okay? And spring one, I'm just, I'm just gonna maintain a small spring constant. Whereas spring two, I will adjust a large spring constant. And immediately you notice that there's a difference. The difference lies in the equilibrium position because a larger spring constant means the spring is stiffer, it's harder to stretch, and because it's harder to stretch, ding ding, the extension is less. In fact, see the spring is thicker. Young modulus chapter, remember? Okay, so I uh, just play lah. So you can see now, um, the one with the uh, larger spring constant is actually moving faster. Is it not obvious enough? Let's make it super obvious. Nah. Okay, so the one with the smaller spring constant, because the spring is very soft, but it will travel a longer distance, it's softer. Of course, it's going to take a longer period okay so whenever you have a relationship that you can derive right of your omega and your period this relationship is very useful in informing us what is important okay okay that's it for today's video next up we're gonna go and look at some examples if you want to join us there quite some interesting ones so yes that's the end of our theory section for simple harmonic motion